Makers, welcome to 3D Maker Noob. I'm Joe and today I want to talk to you about this printer right here. This is the TiVo Tornado and it's the latest printer to come out of the TiVo factory. Now if the shape looks familiar to you, that's because it's pretty much a spinning image of the Creality CR10, which this year was probably one of the most popular 3D printers to come out of China. The Tornado comes with a print volume of 300 by 300 on the X and Y and 400 millimeters on the Z axis. It comes almost fully assembled, however you do require about 15 or 20 minutes to put whatever is left together such as the heat bed and the hot end enclosure plus a few wires and some limit switches. The frame comes in fully extruded v-slot aluminum which has the axes run on rollers and for every other part on the printer it's pretty much anodized aluminum. The printer comes standard with a 0.4 millimeter brass nozzle and a Bowden setup which is run by a clone titan extruder. The heat bed is non-removable however it does come with a Biltex type surface which I found to be extremely effective. Not only that, TiVo do include an extra sheet in the package. The printer also runs on a single lead screw for the Z axis, which is pretty much the same as the original CR10 was. In terms of wiring, this is where the TiVo Tornado sort of one-ups the CR10, because instead of a 12 volt power supply, it does actually run on a 24 volt power supply. Not only that, the heat bed actually runs on AC current and is fully insulated at the bottom, meaning that you will reach very high temperatures on this heat bed very quickly. And last but not least, the TiVo Tornado also uh, sports an external MOSFET for the heat bed. In terms of prints, as you can see, I have put this printer through its paces with over 200 hours worth of 3D printing. As per my last review of the CR10 Mini, I also have done standardized tests, which I will be comparing to the CR10 because I know that you guys will be asking me if you would rather have this or the CR10. So I will be comparing both prints. We'll start off with the CAT G-code that comes on the CR10S. Now, as I've said, I've used the same exact SD card uh, with the same prints and simply moving it from one printer to the other just to make sure I get the right consistency in test prints. In terms of the CAT, both printers pretty much furred identical to be honest. If I had to pick a better quality print, I'd say the TiVo Tornado has a bit of an edge on this. Uh, keep in mind, same SD card, same G-code, um, and same unbranded Chinese filament. And the results pretty much are almost identical with a slight upper hand on the TiVo Tornado. Next up is the 3D Benchy in unbranded Chinese PLA. And the results are actually not bad at all. I have to say for 50 millimeters a second and 200 microns, the result is quite impressive actually. It prints extremely well in cheap PLA. Once again, almost identical to the CR10. The only thing I can possibly say about this print and most of the other prints that come of the TiVo is the fact that you get a lot of resonance artifacts um, along the details. And that is most likely due to the fact that the heat bed is much larger than the normal CR10 and therefore the weight might have a play in the fact that it has acceleration and jerk set to a certain amount which probably should be lowered. Next up are the five standard 3D benches which I printed in Colorfab PLA PHA same as I did with the CR10 mini and the CR10S. First up is the 100 micron 40 millimeter a second benchy and while it printed okay, I'm not saying I'm gonna I'm not gonna say great, I'm gonna say it's it printed okay, you will notice something, and that is there is this artifact on top of the doors of the benchy. However, I need to point out that this particular artifact has appeared on pretty much every single benchy I printed on uh, as a test print on the CR10 Mini and the CR10S, which leads me to believe it was either a partly corrupt G-code or possibly a slicing issue, not necessarily an issue with the TiVo Tornado or any other printer. However, it is much more prominent on the TiVo Tornado. And the reason why it is more evident on the TiVo Tornado is something I will explain in a little bit. As for the rest of the 3D benches, you can probably see that there is not much difference from the CR10S and the TiVo Tornado. And I keep in mind that the CR10S does have dual lead screws, which 
Personally, I don't see that it has made that much of a difference from the original CR10 that I have. However, in terms of quality of the print, its flaws, its highlights, its resonance, they're pretty much identical, so there is not much more to say about those. As for flexible filaments, I once again printed the Octopus in rigiding TPU and also the Octopus in Fibrology FibreFlex. Both turned out absolutely great. However, in this case, in terms of the TPU with the same exact settings, on the CR10, it, the finish on the Octopus is slightly better, so probably the uh, TiVo Tornado just requires a bit of different settings to print the TPU. Then I moved on to PETG and I grabbed my spool of a Printer Pro PETG green and I printed my spool holder. Now, two things I need to point out. One is that this is the only spool holder that I printed which did not lift off the bed and I didn't use any glue whatsoever. So this is why I think that the Biltec type surface that the TiVo Tornado has is actually quite good, so it works very well with it. The other thing I need to point out is the retraction settings. Now, I use the same G code as I said. However, the retraction settings on the CR10 work very differently from the TiVo Tornado, so it requires different settings. And what was happening is when the nozzle was moving from one end of the spool holder to the other, by the time it reached the other end, there was a bit of extrusion. So the way to mitigate that is either to increase the speed of retraction or else increase the speed of the X, Y movement. I then went on to print this Pegasus right here. Now this is the test print I used to see the maximum stated speed of this printer. And in terms of the TiVo Tornado, it's 150 millimeters a second. Now, as you can see while it printed, there were a few layer shifts and that is mainly due to the fact that the bed, as I said, is quite heavy. So I was not surprised at all that I had these layer shifts. Granted that it printed okay, nothing exceptional, of course, but yeah, it's something to keep in mind. I don't think this printer should print higher than possibly 70 or 80 millimeters a second. Then finally, I did the make test. And as you can see, it printed everything quite well. Once again, the detail is not perfect on the tip and that is mainly due to my retraction settings. However, it did manage to print them quite well. Overhangs fare very well, up to what about 60 degrees. It can handle itself quite well on overhangs. As for XY calibration, on one end it's 19.90 millimeters, on the other end it's 19.95. It goes from 19.90 to about 20 millimeters. So it's almost there, but it does need a little bit of calibration on the X and Y. As for the tolerance test, as you can see that almost all the dowels came out up to 0.3 millimeters. The 0.2 millimeter is completely fused, which is pretty much on par with the CR10S. As for the Z resonance, it printed extremely well all the way up while the gantry turns to shake a little bit with movement, it printed this beautifully and it printed it much better than the CR10S or the CR10 Mini because there were no, not layer shifts, but more kind of layer movements up at the top. So once I printed all of those, it was time for me to do some reliability tests and that is long prints. And the first thing I did was I printed this thing right here. This is the Blackbird and it prints in one, two, three, four pieces and a few dowels to stick them together. I also want to point out that this was printed in cheap unbranded black PLA. So the results are actually quite good. While it needs a bit of work just to sort of make sure that the, um, that the edges line up where you stick it together, I did notice that there had quite a bit of under extrusion and that is also visible on the stand right here. As you can see, I didn't actually change it. As you can see, the layers are splitting apart and I couldn't figure out why until I had a look at the extruder. And what was happening is that I didn't notice that the screws that hold the extruder together weren't tightened very well. And I had one of them which was almost all the way out and it happened to be the same one 
that holds the gear that turns the filament. So what was happening is with the fast retractions, it was just, it was just literally skipping on the filament, which is why that happened. So what I did was I tightened all the screws and I decided to run another um, reliability test. And this is where this awesome jack-o'-lantern comes in. This thing was enlarged by about 475% if I'm not wrong and prints in three parts. You have the bowl itself, you have the top and you also have this thing right here. It was all printed in filamentive RPLA and as I said it took about I think 60 hours to print or something like that but I have to say it came out absolutely amazing. My daughter had a bowl using this for her trick-or-treating and for holding candy and it's something that we'll definitely be using going forward. Once I adjusted the extruder screws the print quality was so much better and I wish I'd have known about the extruder screws when I was printing the rest of these because I think it would have produced a much better result. However um, for the sake of the printer printing as it comes that was the result so once you start tweaking out and make sure that everything is set right yeah expect this kind of quality and this i have to say is absolutely awesome so what do i think about the tivo tornado um i'm going to be honest i actually really really like the tivo tornado and i like it for quite a few reasons obviously the cr10 was a very popular printer for a very specific reason and that was because it was reliable and it printed great so there was no reason for this not to fare any better because it's based on the exact same design. Do I applaud someone who clones a printer? No, not exactly. However, I do like the fact that TiVo have taken the CR10 and upgraded the things that I kind of mentioned in my initial CR10 review and that was the heat bed because it was it used to take quite a while to heat up the bed so what they did was they installed the AC heat bed with a MOSFET once again and it heats up insanely quick so waiting time up to about 90 degrees on the heat bed takes possibly about three to four minutes which is absolutely awesome. The print quality is actually quite great um, and I do believe that if I spend some more time in dialing in the settings for each filament it can definitely improve even over the quality of this print right here. Finally, the price. It's set at $340 and that is without any discount codes, which is relatively cheap compared to the CR10 Mini, which is $360 or the original CR10, which is $380. Not to mention the CR10S, which is, I think it's about $500. So this is definitely something worth considering at that price point. Now there are a few things which I don't particularly like about this printer and the first one the most most important one is the noise. Unfortunately it carries the same issue that the CR10 and CR10S have and that is the noise that comes out of the control box. Unfortunately once again it has quite a few fans they're quite powerful so they tend to get quite noisy and if you're in a room and you have this next to you it will probably bother you. Next up is the resonance. Um, as you've noticed, some prints or most of the prints have that resonance effect when it comes to details or change of directions. And that is most likely due to the weight of the heat bed because it's quite heavy and the jerk and acceleration are probably set a bit too high. So most likely you can, uh, you can either change the settings and print in slower, which is not honestly recommended with a printer this size. You actually want to print quite fast. Alternatively, you will have to uh, dial in the settings through Marlin and re-upload the firmware. Another thing which I wasn't particularly happy about was the fact that almost every single screw on the printer was not tightened up when I assembled it. And these things started coming more evident the more printing I was doing because I could hear rattling. So I had to go over all the screws. Now, I don't know if this is a QA issue or the fact that it, the, possibly the box was very, very poorly handled as it usually is by delivery couriers. So, but that is just something to keep in mind. Finally, another thing that I have to mention is the fact that there might be lengthy lead times if you do decide to order this printer. Unfortunately, what happened was that um, when TiVo announced the Tornado, they were taking pre-orders and people were paying. 
The only problem was that TiVo did not have these in stock. They, they were using the pre-ordered funds in order to stock up on the printers. So while the TiVo Tornado is being delivered, it's not being delivered at a fast enough rate. Now, this printer right here was sent to me by TiVo directly. Um, however, I did get in also in contact with Gearbest to see what their stock supply is like. And they did confirm that they are able to ship between 15 and 20 per day. So that is something to keep in mind just in case and also before you start flaming me in the comments. Disclaimer as always guys, this printer was sent to me directly by TiVo themselves in order for me to do an unbiased review. No money has exchanged hands and all my thoughts are, well, my own based on this machine right here and the experience I had with it. I will leave non-affiliate links to TiVo Direct in the video description with some uh, discount codes you guys can use. And I will also leave affiliate links from Gearbest which also offer discount codes seeing as they are TiVo partners. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I want to thank you guys for watching. I want to thank my absolutely awesome patrons whose support is absolutely incredible and helps me keep on doing what I love doing. And I also want to thank Filamentive for sponsoring this channel. Please make sure you check them out in the video description below. Please like if you enjoyed the video, share, subscribe, and as always, happy making guys.